episode of Command Combat Battle Reports featuring Command Combat Civil War. Today we will be doing a battle out of 1864, the expansion that is releasing this year. We are going to be doing the Siege Breakout scenario. The Confederates are being besieged and the Union is trying to keep them inside. The Confederates will be trying to break, the, uh, to break out and get from this side of the board to off that side of the board. They did a very clever thing during uh, setup. Uh, they did this road over here, but they were having trouble managing to uh, get the points to, uh, or being able to uh, set up the table to have a road that way. The Union was blocking them. You can see in the rules basically how that works. Essentially, you use cavalry points to do that, and Confederates didn't quite have enough to do that. So what they did instead was created a farm over here, which means that they get a road along with it, so they will have it, uh, one road over there in which to use to try to escape, and then they will have a road over there to try to escape. Let's take a look at the forces. Here are the enemy forces all in one tray. The Union's at the top, the Confederates at the bottom. Uh, the Union has one other thing that we'll see on the board. It's a siege train. Won't exactly fit on the uh, tray, but anyway, let's take a look at the forces here. We've got the Union on the top. They are led by Thomas, who has great defensive abilities in 64. He also has uh, some engineering skills as well that he uses. Smith, who uh, runs one division, which uh, he has a skill to swing around the enemy. Uh, Newton, who has a great engineering ability. And Custer, who has gallant charge, Wolverines, and last stand. Essentially, he uh, is great on the offense and defense, and uh, his troopers wind up fighting a lot like infantry. Plus, there's a bit of uh, mixed artillery in there as well. On the Confederate side, we've got Longstreet, who has a surprise move, which he used in the Battle of the Wilderness, and a couple division commanders who just simply have regular abilities, but then uh, you've got Hampton, who has cavalry, who also fights basically as infantry, which is basically what the, most of the cavalry was doing by this time of the war. All right, we will see them soon placed onto the board. So everyone is now placed in their opening positions. The Confederates are in their works and the Union are all around it. There is the siege train we were talking about. It's got a large howitzer gun uh, inside of it that does a huge amount of damage when it hits, but it has to range in. And there's infantry in the other car for defensive fire. Uh, Thomas is with Smith and his division over here. Custer's division of cavalry is over here, and the other division is split here and here with its general on the uh, on the bridge between the tracks. That uh, division commander is Newton, and he's the great engineer. We've got artillery spread out as well. It is the core artillery. Uh, its commander is not down. We actually forgot to put him there. We'll put him there in a moment. The Confederates are placed all along. These would normally be medium works, however, he bought additional works in, in the 1864 book. The Confederate player can automatically play Defender and get extra works, and so these are now considered heavy works. Uh, there's a bombardment phase at the beginning of this particular scenario, so they probably will not take uh, much in terms of damage. So, let's see how it goes, shall we? Well, we had a devastating opening volley turn. Uh, in the scenario with Siege Breakout, uh, both sides fire their artillery to weaken one another. It represents the time during the siege when they were firing at each other, and wow, did we have some devastating uh, hits. First of all, the Confederates fired, took out the, uh, the Union artillery on the hill. That's not as much a surprise as the train, which is a real pity because I was looking forward to seeing uh, what all that do and how it could move around the table and all that sort of thing. Uh, actually, it can move around, but it's, it, they've lost uh, the troops inside the car and the howitzer. However, before the howitzer was destroyed, it fired back over here, killed Hampton, uh, which uh, he died a heroic death, so his men's morale went up for, uh, first of all, but they still got uh, their morale damaged enough that they pulled back. That was Hampton's legion. Uh, and so he was the only general on the Confederate side who had a special ability, uh, but now his men are sort of pushed back a bit and he is uh, damaged. None of the rest of the Union artillery really did anything because the Confederates are in uh, heavy fortifications. That's really what they spent those points on. Now it's uh, going to be about them trying to escape. Let's see how it goes. And the escaped attempt has begun. Both sides were trying to wait to see what the other one was going to do. Uh, but the Union ran out of uh, cards, so they built defensive works with their engineers. Uh, their engineers, and because they have generals who improve it, 
uh, some of the defensive works went up right away. Uh, but they stayed where they were, which is important because now the Confederates have started to break out some of the infantry along here and along here. Uh, this Union artillery fired and did a little bit of damage and uh, caused these guys to get a bit scared. These actually are criminals. The, uh, conf the, the, the Confederacy got so desperate near the end that they were freeing criminals and, and giving them guns and saying, fight for us. So uh, they're a green unit uh, that, that are over here and, uh, you know, but they are uh, more forces for the Confederacy. They got hit and they're a bit shaken. And meanwhile, their main forces are over here with their commanders. Yeah, they're not caring so much about their criminals. Anyway, uh, the, the, the uh, Confederate artillery fired back and did 50% damage to the Union artillery on both sides. And so uh, they're actually whittling them down. Meanwhile, their cavalry is moving into the woods. The rest of it is, uh, these guys shifted over a little bit while these, uh, this cavalry has gotten back as Hampton's Legion, has gotten back into those defensive works, and they're all trying to kind of, it seems, break through the center. We'll see how it goes. We're coming to mid-turn because there's something exciting happening in the middle. Uh, there is a charge taking place, which would normally just be these two brigades attacking the front, but Longstreet's uh, ability is roll him up like a wet blanket, and he is enacting that ability, which means that he can break off part of a brigade and make a new brigade that is green. We don't have the green sticker on it yet, but anyway, it's a new brigade which is uh, green, but it can suddenly appear six inches away and come in. So basically, it's like a surprise. This brigade has suddenly appeared on the Union flank. He's using it exactly the way it's meant to be. Uh, so it's got two brigades coming in on the front and one brigade from the side, along with two commanders to sort of help. So uh, we'll see how that charge goes. The charge was successful. The Confederates got over those defensive works, pushed back the Federals. In fact, uh, they've only got a couple stands left. They've really been hurt badly. But Custer hadn't activated, and now he activates right on the Confederate flank. It is sort of the perfect attack. He's going to be doing his gallant charge, which may bring them right through the Confederates. We're going to see here in a moment, uh, but I just wanted to continue bringing you part of this turn as it uh, unfolds. And there's the result of your charge. Actually, really, there's the result. All those bodies and the fact that the Federals have one stand left and there are no stands left of that brigade. There is still this brigade that's there. And, uh, the the uh, Federals got stopped purely by the woods, but otherwise they were just sweeping right through them. And the fact that when you're in a battle, you lose a couple inches as well. So they uh, just wiped out one brigade and are uh, down to one stand with Custer there as well, but then there's another brigade right there. They also took out Heinemann. They knocked him unconscious and ran over where he was. Well, actually, no, I guess they just knocked him unconscious right where he is, so they haven't quite captured him yet. But, uh, yeah, the uh, Confederate breakout that looked like it was happening there is not complete quite yet. We still have the firing phase yet to go, though. And this very bloody turn ends with even more blood. The Confederate artillery concentrated their fire and took out two stands of Custer's back cavalry, which up to this point was uh, untouched, was uh, still in good order, coming up behind that first line of uh, charging. But uh, yeah, now they're weakened as well. So just kind of everybody was getting hit and smacked and all that sort of stuff. All along the rest of the board, everybody's kind of moving to position. These guys are clearly trying to get out that direction, or at least moving into these woods to choose. That cavalry is moving up on Custer's cavalry. And the criminals were fired on again and took some more casualties uh, from that artillery back there. And some of the Union is coming out of the woods there. Uh, and so it is just, the, the battle is definitely on. This will probably be decided in the next few turns. Meanwhile, the cats are just being too darn cute. Uh, that's got to be a violation somehow. We need to uh, call them out on that. Coming to midturn again because another exciting cavalry charge is happening, this time from the Confederates. They are charging Custer's back line. Uh, we had forgotten to do one thing before, which was to roll the morale of this cavalry that was in the rear of Custer. Uh, they pulled back a little bit, back to these railroads, uh, which actually worked to their advantage because otherwise this uh, this Confederate cavalry would have been able to maneuver around and uh, charge them on the back. Instead, it'll be on their flank, which is still quite bad, especially because Longstreet is attaching himself, and he's going to try to uh, fight them. And they broke through, tearing up that uh, Union cavalry. That Union cavalry that was still fresh at the end of last turn is now completely gone, completely destroyed. Uh, 
John Lundstrom himself has led the cavalry through and uh, taken them out. They have two stands left with nothing between them and the empty well. It's, I guess there's this little bit of infantry. Well, meanwhile, uh, Custer's still there with a little bit of cavalry, and we still have the rest of this turn left. So finally at the end of this extremely bloody turn, this artillery finally had its effect on the criminals. They have routed. They are running back here. They have, uh, well, there's no honor among thieves, and they're just like, hey, we don't need to be fighting here. Uh, these, uh, this brigade is marching over towards the bridge to go help out these guys who got charged by this force. This Confederate brigade went up there, chopped them down to just one stand left. Meanwhile, the uh, Federal uh, cavalry, led by Custer, is also charging in the same direction. This is the great irony. Is, uh, yeah, I could, I'd love to tour this battlefield, uh, being that everyone, that the Federals and the Confederates are charging in the same direction. The Federals took out that uh, Confederate cavalry, and the uh, Confederates took, almost took out that infantry completely. Over here, this uh, cavalry brigade has dismounted and getting ready to hold off against two uh, Union brigades, while meanwhile this Confederate brigade begins running this way because it looks like they might have this particular path clear. Oh yes, I also forgot to mention this uh, little duel here. The Confederate artillery fired at the infantry over there, didn't do any effect. But the uh, Federal infantry over there, with very little chance of hitting, actually hit. Meanwhile, the cats remain way too cute. This is, no, you guys, that is just, that's a violation. We gotta figure this out. The fierceness continues. It looks like we are reaching the climax here, uh, right here in the intense part, uh, or at least intense last turn. Uh, this turn, everybody just had to get back into order because everybody was involved in something last turn. So this turn, they had to get back into order. Uh, this federal, federal infantry is getting ready to defend against that Confederate infantry with uh, Longstreet running over there to them. And Custer is getting his one stand of cavalry ready for this infantry that was coming, but now they're in disorder because they got fired on by this infantry which moved into position with Thomas right next to them. And this infantry with their uh, division commander has moved into these woods and are coming up on the dismounted cavalry. So like I said, they weren't in uh, fire range yet. They need to be uh, a little closer to be able to see each other in the woods. But uh, that's probably going to be what's going to be happening. A little more pot shots over here. These uh, artillery pieces concentrated on, I uh, believe, over here on this, uh, on this infantry. I think they scared them a little bit, did not do any damage to them. Uh, and they've been picking off some people here as well. Anyway, it's coming close to its climax, it looks like. Beginning of the turn, Custer got the first card, and he did a bold charge with one stand of cavalry into all that uh, Confederate infantry, but getting them in march column, which means hitting them right to the front so there'd only be one stand against his one stand, but they are veterans, and so, uh, well, it winds up being an even fight, and they managed to take out the Union uh, cavalry. Uh, Custer did not get hit, so he managed to escape, so he'll be pulling back, but uh, that does it for the Union Cavalry. A lot continues to happen. Now over here on the left, we're gonna go left to right. Uh, this uh, brigade is going across that bridge, got hit from some artillery way back here, damaged their morale, killed off a few guys, but they are continuing to move over to try to protect over here, where the Confederates have charged the Union Brigade on that, on that uh, railroad have finished them off and now finally have a clear road off the board because the cavalry, having tried to charge this unit, has wiped themselves out. Now Custer literally is all alone back there, surrounded by gray coats. This unit is, this brigade is in disorder, trying to move out of there. They're getting hit from behind, taking some damage. Actually, we tried, we forgot to do their morale, so we're gonna do that here in a second. Uh, although they actually, they fired on last turn, this particular turn, they fired over here and uh, took out uh, some of the cavalry, which started to move away from these guys. Rather than taking them on, just kind of moved back. Uh, some of them peeked out of the woods, got hit with a pot shot, and now they are getting a bit scared. Uh, this artillery fired out at uh, that same Union Brigade, but found that they are low on ammo, and that's about where we are at this particular point. Both, both sides are actually uh, getting close to their uh, damage number, so they might be giving up this fight pretty soon. So we are basically reaching an absurd ending here at this point. Uh, this brigade here that was moving up, this is the one that was in March Column here. Uh, 
this brigade over here is uh, this uh, veteran brigade that's being led by Thomas over here. Uh, got up onto this hill, fired on their rear. That caused them to rout. It took out a few of them and then caused the rest to rout. Um, so now they are routing towards where they want to go, but they are routing nonetheless. And these folks here are routing as well. This really is enough of a number to cause uh, Longstreet to break and essentially say, and essentially give up. But that would mean moving his guys back into the works, and frankly, it would be far more dangerous for him to get into the works because the Union is uh, behind him. So what we're going to do at this point is, I mean, basically Confederates have lost at this particular point. We're just going to see how many they can get off the table. Oh, and one other thing, remember this cavalry that was here, actually it was this cavalry that was, uh, at the edge of the woods. Well, the Federals got their card first. They decided to charge, but there is a rule that when uh, infantry charges cavalry that is mounted, uh, the cavalry gets to uh, retreat, but uh, they go into disorder. They have to run right away as far as they can. They got about that far, and the Federals uh, that are here are in disorder, but they've basically done what they need to do. They have trapped this cavalry here. They really can't get out. They couldn't really get out that way. There's infantry over there now and there's artillery there, so they're basically trapped. All this artillery is trapped. Uh, this infantry is the only ones that have the chance of getting out along with Longstreet. And that brings us to the end of a very bloody and pretty absurd battle. Uh, essentially, uh, Thomas's uh, brigade, well actually the brigade that Thomas was uh, attaching himself to, fired one more time at the brigade that Longstreet was attached to, which is kind of interesting because you have the two corps commanders basically going mano a mano at the end. Uh, they didn't really do any damage, but because they're being fired on in the rear, their morale was really down. Longstreet kept them from routing, and they managed to get off the table, which you can see is right in front of them. This brigade turned slightly so they wouldn't be getting hit on the flank or rear or anything. They got fired on by uh, this brigade, and once again, their division commander just barely uh, kept, them in the, uh, kept them from running. They did take uh, half a stand of damage, so that's quite a few people. That's hundreds of uh, men just fell. But uh, he kept them together so they would get off this table safely. So they get off with four and a half stands plus two generals. That was uh, valuable to the Confederacy, particularly because Longstreet got out of there. You kind of saw why he's valuable. He has some tricks up his sleeve, and he's represented that way in the game. And then you got Thomas over here, who really led his men quite well, uh, and uh, of course you had uh, had Custer over here who did quite a bit as well. well I would call him a VIP, but Custer does what Custer, or Custer did what he uh, typically does well, which is lose a lot of his men for his own glory. So anyway, it was technically a Union victory, even though they got some of their men off the board. That'll do it uh, for this 1864 book. Remember, 1864, uh, the expansion is now available on Wargame Vault and on Amazon for a full copy of it, or for a physical copy of it. Uh, and uh, so is the rest of the um, game from 1861 to 1864. Keep on watching, we'll have more of these from this game and other games as well. Thank you uh, for watching and uh, be sure to subscribe. Happy gaming everybody!